Russian troops regularly abuse and torture Ukrainians. Ukrainians from occupied settlements told the New York Times about how enemy soldiers treated them. A group of reporters conducted research, including dozens of interviews with former prisoners of occupiers, representatives of human rights organizations, and Ukrainian officials from the Prosecutor General's Office, Intelligence and Ombudsmen, in order to find out how the Russians treat Ukrainian residents in the occupied territories. One such story was shared by a man named Yevgeny. He lived on the seashore in southern Ukraine. According to him, in December 2022, eight masked men in Russian military uniform came for him and sent him for interrogation. The occupiers kept Evgeny in a locked basement. They beat the man with their fists, a crowbar, poured water on him and suffocated him with a plastic bag. My legs, my buttocks, everything from the waist down was black, recalls Evgeny. The man noted that he could not lie down for six weeks after the beating. He had to sleep sitting in a chair. Evgeny added that his limbs and muscles did not work and the skin on his hands was cracked. It took eight months to recover, the man said. A local doctor told him he was not the only person tortured in that basement. The publication stated that Russia is trying its best to hide the atrocities of its soldiers in temporarily occupied settlements of Ukraine from the outside world. Nevertheless, human rights organizations, Ukrainian prosecutors and government officials manage to closely monitor the situation based on the stories of civilians who live there or have managed to return to the controlled territories. Human rights activists believe that Russia's ultimate goal is to destroy Ukrainian identity. To achieve this, the occupiers use propaganda torture, forced acquisition of Russian citizenship and sending Ukrainian children to the Russian Federation. According to the United Nations, Russia occupies about a fifth of Ukraine's territory, home to more than four million people. The publication noted, the fate of Ukrainians living there is one reason why President Volodymyr Zelensky does not agree to a peace deal that would involve territorial concessions to Russia. In addition, human rights groups and Ukrainian officials estimate that the Russians are forcibly holding about 22,000 Ukrainians. Of these, about 8,000 are prisoners of war and the rest are civilians. Earlier, paramedic Ekaterina Polishchuk, call sign Bird, said that the Russians tortured Ukrainian defenders who came out after the battles at Azovstal on a daily basis and interrogated them. She emphasized that the medics were not allowed to provide proper assistance to the wounded. In addition, the Vakovna Rada Commissioner for Human Rights, Dmitro Lubinets, confirmed that in the Kharkiv region, Russians are torturing Ukrainian defenders who are in captivity. The Israeli military said on Wednesday it destroyed a tunnel network it claimed was used by Hezbollah militants in the area of Mebibib, a town in southern Lebanon. The troops located and conducted targeted raids on a large network of underground infrastructure and tunnel shafts that included living quarters and armories and found a large quantity of weaponry, the army said in a statement. Early Wednesday, Israel struck Beirut's southern suburbs for the first time in nearly a week. Late Tuesday, Israeli strikes killed at least 15 people in the southern Lebanese town of Kana which has long been associated with civilian deaths after Israeli strikes during previous conflicts with Hezbollah. Hezbollah has a strong presence in southern Beirut, known as the Dahia, which is also a residential and commercial area home to large numbers of civilians and people unaffiliated with the militant group. Israeli Chief of Staff Lt. Gen. Herzi Halavai said on Tuesday that his country will once again know how to reach Iran if Tehran were to launch another missile barrage at Israel. If Iran makes the mistake of launching another missile barrage at Israel, we will once again know how to reach Iran with capabilities that we did not even use this time, he said. Halavai made the remarks while visiting the squadrons that took part in the strike on Iran at the Ramon Air Base. 
Israel attacked military targets in Iran with pre-dawn airstrikes on Saturday in retaliation for the barrage of ballistic missiles the Islamic Republic fired on Israel earlier this month. It was the first time Israel's military has openly attacked Iran. The Israeli military said its aircraft targeted facilities that Iran used to make the missiles fired at Israel as well as surface-to-air missile sites. How Iran chooses to respond to the unusually public Israeli airstrikes could determine whether the region spirals further toward all-out war or holds steady at an already devastating and destabilizing level of violence. In the coldly calculating realm of Middle East geopolitics, a strike of the kind that Israel delivered before dawn Saturday would typically be met with a forceful response. Doing so would allow Iran's clerical leadership to show strength not only its own citizens but also to Hamas in Gaza and Lebanon's Hezbollah, the militant groups battling Israel. Analysts say Tehran may opt to hold back for now.